Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rebecca and on this channel I go through all things accounting, finance, Exxon, investment related. So if you like this kind of stuff, then please do consider subscribing and otherwise, as always, we're going to get straight into the video. So this is a really exciting playlist that I'm going to be producing because as you all know, I nerd out a little bit about Excel and any type of accounting software that is available. And one particular piece of software that I really love for bookkeeping and accounts production in general is Sage 50. So Sage 50 is a version of Sage that you can purchase. So there is Sage 50 Cloud, the Sage 200 Cloud, the Sage Payroll, there's all these different types of Sage versions out there. But Sage 50 is one of my favorite. So in this mini series, I'm going to go through a beginner's course in effect of how you can use Sage 50 in your business. So let's get started. Now, this took me a little while to set up because Sage's website has changed and they've got a lot more different products to choose from, as you can see here. So it did take me a little while to understand the version of Sage that I wanted. So even when you type in Sage 50 here, you can see if I can just click off there um, or not. <laughs> In fact, if I go to the top here and just search for Sage 50 up here, let's see what that comes up with. Okay, so we're back to this screen again. So that took a little while, as you can see there. So if we go down here, you get cash flow and invoicing, VAT and making tax digital, reporting, insight, stock, inventory. Microsoft Office 365 is also integrated with Sage 50. You've got your payments and banking like you do with most other versions of Sage. So down here again, this is not the one that I want. I don't want the Sage Business Cloud Accounting, which is actually nothing for the next five months. I really wish those ads didn't keep popping up. But anyway, um, what I want is this Sage 50 Cloud Standard. So there is the 50 Cloud Standard and the 50 Cloud Professional. So you do get the same sort of things that you get with this Sage Business Cloud Accounting. But what I find, and it's not specific to Sage, but just in general with different versions of accounting software is if it's all online, it can become a bit of a pain because if your internet connection goes down, it can be a bit of a pain and it can slow down the functionality of that particular version of Sage. So here we have a desktop accounting solution here that has got cash flow, income expenses, payments. Um, you can create personalized invoices and quotes, set up contacts with different pricing and discounts. Again, invoices, transactions to reoccur, automatic bank reconciliation. You can calculate and submit VAT to HMRC, add extra users, manage and submit MCIS to HMRC, which is only applicable if you are a contractor. So that is a form that you've got to complete if you are a contractor or subcontractor, etc. Create and run bespoke reports, track and manage stock, manage multiple companies, departments and budgets, invoice and trade in foreign currencies. So that's great if you are a standalone company. If you are a professional company that has various different numbers of companies, etc., different people using it, then the Sage 50 Cloud Professional would be better fitted, in my opinion, to what this one would be over here. But because I am only one person, I am going to go ahead and choose this Sage 50 Cloud standard software. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase that quickly. And here you can see I've got the option of how many users. So do I have one user, two users, up to two companies, up to 10 companies, pay monthly or pre-annually? So here I've got Telephone Plus support and here I've got the option to choose Premier Plus support where you get callback overnight and weekend data services, Office 365 support, etc. But for what I'm using this for, um, I'm only going to choose the standard support. I don't really need this Premium Plus support. I don't have any deadlines that I'm going to have. I don't have any clients deadlines, etc. where I need to get something done there and then and be on the phone with somebody. Whatever I'm going to do, it can wait. So we're going to go ahead and choose this version. So I'm not going to upgrade my support. I am simply going to click on buy now. So just to give you guys a little bit of an update of where we are now, we should have received an email giving a step by step basic guide on how to download this version of Sage. But there's been nothing that's come through and I've been trying to refresh my browser for about half an hour now. And I would have thought that there would be something that's come through or maybe I'm just being a little bit impatient. However, in the meantime, I found this Sage knowledge base, which gives you access to download. So I'm going to have a quick 
look through this and see if we can download this version of Sage. So I'm just going to go through these install steps at the bottom. No, I'm only going to be using that on one laptop effectively. Okay, so need to check that the computer meets the system requirements, so let's do that quickly. Yes, it does. Yep, yep, yep. So we're all good there. And then latest updates for Windows. Yes, I've got that. So you can now log on to computer as an administrator. Okay, use activation key, etc. So hmm, we've got this Sage 50 Counts UK video to watch. So let's have a quick browse through this. So I need to download this first. I'm just going to click on download Sage 50 Accounts software. So finally we're ready to download the Sage 50 Cloud account software. So I'm just going to click on this here. Okay, I'm just going to read the terms. So now that we've read those, I'm going to click I accept the terms of license agreement. I'm going to click on standard recommended here and make sure that I want this to be downloaded in that area, which I do. So I'm going to click yes, begin installation. Okay, so now that application has installed successfully, we can launch Sage 50 accounts. Okay, just clicking accept to this message about privacy settings. Okay, so here I'm going to add a brand new company, so I'm going to create, I don't have another company to connect to, restore or download, so I'm going to click on continue. And then I'm going to pop in my serial number and activation key. So it's now actually three days later since I started this video recording because unfortunately it was a bank holiday. And I think what happens with Sage is that they've got to manually verify your account. So my welcome email has only just come into my account and oh my word, have I been waiting for it. So I've gone onto my email and it said to install your Sage 50 cloud account. So I'm verifying my account as you can see here. And now I've got an install your Sage 50 cloud accounts. So let's just read the guide, just to make sure that what I did last time was correct. So yeah, I found this, this page on my own last time and it is the correct page, so that's fine. So if I go back one, there is a video showing you how to install and next steps, how to set up your company, etc. So what we're gonna do now is go to Sage 50 that we've got open up somewhere. There we go. And we should now have a serial number and activation key. So go back and I do, yay. So that was all on the email in case anybody's wondering. So let's just pop those details in. And another box has popped up about the account number. So I'm just popping that in there as well. So you can see here, I'm just clicking on next. Okay, so now I've got some information to pop in about the company, business type, financial year, flat details, currency, password, and there is a summary box here. So it's on your business type, you've got the option of sole trader, partnership, limited company, charity, and create your own, which is an advanced option, but I'm just gonna go ahead and select limited company. So it tells you there a little bit of information about what it's gonna do. So if it's going to create a PL and a balance sheet, and there, if you are a charity, there you've got your SOFA and fund analysis reports, which are specifically designed for a charity and is a requirement of charity reporting. So I'm gonna click next with this limited company. So financial year is July. You can see here that it tells you what that financial year is going to look like. And sometimes it's a bit confusing with other pieces of software because you're not sure if they're asking you, well, when does the financial year start or what month does it end? So there I've clicked July and you can see it's the 1st July to the 30th of June 2022. However, I actually want to do the 1st of July 2020 to the 30th of June 2021. So I'm going to click next. VT registration number. So if you are that registered, you're going to put your registration number there. What type of VAT scheme you are under. And if you're not sure, then you can always go on the HMRC website just to clarify. Or again, talk to an accountant if you're not sure. And the standard VAT rate is 20%. But my company is not VAT registered, so this does not apply. Select the currency your account to be prepared in. So pounds sterling. So password. You can just have a look at the summary and make sure that all of that information is correct, which it is in my case. I'm just going to go ahead and click on create here. So I'm just popping in the password. 
This is very exciting, isn't it? So you've successfully created a new company. Would you like to customize it for your business? If you're an accountant or Sage accounts expert, you can close this window and configure, you, configure your company manually. So I'm just going to click on customize company and see what that does. This is fancy. <laughs> okay, so here we can see customer default supplier purchases, banking products, transactions, administration payments, Microsoft 365 integration and automatic enrollment. So here we have customer defaults where you can set up defaults that automatically appear in each new customer record that you create. So I'm not going to do that just for a minute. So we've got invoices, quotations, customer records, suppliers and purchases, banking, to save time and reduce potential errors by setting up bank defaults, products if you've got product lines, transactions, so recording of foreign currencies, VAT UK, departments if you want that, budgeting, administration, so access rights, email defaults, MySage login, desktop navigation, look at payments, get your invoices paid faster by using the invoice payment solution, so you've got both cardless in here, invoice payments, etc. if you want to use that, and again you've got Microsoft 365 integration and auto enrollment. So what auto enrollment is, is just regarding your employees, so if you've got auto enrollment, auto enrollment is a legal requirement where you need to auto enroll new employees onto a pension and that came in a few years ago but employees can obviously opt to be out of that auto enrollment but again go on HMRC's website if you're not sure what auto enrollment is or speak to an accountant and I'm sure that they can help. So here we've got managing payroll so you can also add in Sage 50 payroll, pension cost planners and link payroll and accounts so this way you can link nominal link options to post salary information directly into sage 50 from sage 50 payroll so all that means in plain english is if you're using sage 50 payroll that will automatically post those nominal ledger postings so the journal into sage for you so that does save a lot of time if again you have sage 50 payroll but for the purposes of what I'm doing, I'm not using Sage 50 Payroll at this present moment in time. I might do that in future if there is a request for that of individuals, but again, I'm not going to do that just this minute. So I'm not actually going to do any of this customization at the moment. You can go back in and customize things at a later date. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on close at the moment. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. So here you can see the main screen for Sage 50. And it's all very tidy. I do like the look of this. So you've got your customers, invoices and credits, suppliers over here, products and services, bank accounts, nominal codes, VAT, transaction departments, and diary, which is interesting. So if we click on file, we've got the usual options of new company, reporting, batch reporting, backups, scheduled backups, maintenance, restore, import, etc. So if you're importing journals, etc. You've got usual edits, uh, view, modules, so these things on the side over here, these customs, etc, just the modules, settings, so customised defaults. So if you want to add more or less on this side, I'm sure that you can, as you can with other uh, versions of Sage, but we'll have a look at that. Tools, so activation, period end, reports, etc, favourites, web links. So all of this is very useful and I have to say I do like the look of this. So that all in all is the setup of Sage 50 from scratch and I'm sorry that it took three days to um, record this video but it is what it is. Um, but I'm going to be doing a complete mini series with Sage to help you understand how to use Sage better. And maybe you're somebody who's new to Sage and you really don't know how it works or what you need to do, where to start, etc. Or maybe you're somebody who currently uses Sage 50 but you just want a little bit of a refresh around certain topics and how to use Sage 50. And there might even be some best practice that you can put into place where you currently work that you're not currently aware of. So that might be interesting. But stay tuned with the Sage 50 series. And if there's something you want to see in particular, by all means, stuff the comment section below with any requests and I'll see if I can pull a video together for you on that because I can assure you, you won't be the only person who wants to know how to do a certain thing within Sage 50. So I'm going to end the video there. Once again, thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked the video. Consider subscribing as always and I shall see you on the next video.